What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah in the building, and here is another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. I am joined with no other, like normal, my big dog, Big Nate Dog. Let me tell you uh, uh, something. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. And we have yeah. a special guest, Nate Dog, in the building today. <laughs> If you can't... <laughs> no, I need to start... Should I just start flying? <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. There's a lot of things about this next guest. Uh-huh. Not only is his jersey, but look at his forehead. I mean, oh, this no. dude doing it big, bro. We got He's... our guy from the very own Big Head Podcast right here with the Dub Network, Mr. Kevin Mitch himself. Yes. In the building. Appreciate you coming to join us. Absolutely. It's a big week, isn't it? That's yeah. a big week. What, what you got on your chest there, huh? Little Deshaun, little D Jack, little D Jack, throwback, wow. old, school, old school. I like that. that's, that's that's official jersey too. That's it. Mitch, could you run like D Jack? <laughs> I'm built for I'm built for comfort, not speed. <laughs> hey man, so before we get this thing rolling, Kyle, yeah. we have a lot to talk about today. We're gonna kick it off with our "Say It With Your Chest" segment. Yes, okay? sir. Say it with your chest. Dallas Cowboys or Philadelphia Eagles this week? Say it with your chest. Demonstrate. I'm trying to figure out. You Eagles, just, baby. What you can ooh. see? Is that right? Is that you can fly it oh, up. Is that flying oh, up? So you're you going to fly it on this week? You're going to fly this the week. The Eagles wow. going to win this week. That's what you're saying. Yep. What's the prediction? You know, division games, it, they're, yeah. they're either really close yep. or they're, or they're blowouts. blowouts. Correct. <sighs> Who's going yeah, back in this game for, for Dallas? Is it going to be Rush again? Mm -hmm. It's going to be Cooper. Yeah, it's going to be. 31 13. I'll take it. Dallas? Yes, sir. Just say it with <laughs> your chest. That's what you mean, right? That was your uh, his accent, dog. Man. You got to talk up. If I had a snowball, I'd throw it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Mitch is saying it with his chest yeah. saying 31 13, going to be Philadelphia over Dallas. Nate, dog, who do you have? You know my motto. You know my saying, man. Look at here. Mm. Look at here. Mm. We had the Bama boys two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah from, from Washington. Payne and Allen. Yeah. Then this past week, we had Gaines, Gaines and Donald. And Donald. Uh-huh. Now we got Jordan Davis uh -huh. and Fletcher Cox. Uh -huh. If we can get through this win tunnel, uh -huh. tunnel we're going to win this thing big by one point. Ooh, yes, sir. I don't so care how I go. I'm saying that with my chest. Nate Dog saying it with his chest. He says it's gonna be Dallas point. over Philly, so we got one and one, right? Right. So you guys, so you're you saying Philly. to me one nothing? Is that right. gonna be the final? Hey, 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 <laughs> look at the final one. Baseball, it can baseball be 52 time. Fifty-two to fifty-one. Mm. It can be forty-nine to forty-eight. Mm. The Cowboys will win by one point, and we will do it by running the ball against them two beasts y'all got in the middle. Man, okay, so we got we got Nate Dog, who's obviously right. a Dallas homer. Okay, he's yeah. gonna rep for Dallas all day long. We got Mitch that's gonna rock with Philly all yeah. day long. Yeah. It don't matter. It could be a heads up, seven up game. Yeah. He's going with Philly. I am gonna say with my chest. Mm, I'm gonna say. Maybe come across that. Hey, boy, I want to see that glasses of Nate Dog. I want to see come across that. I'm going to say it with my chest here okay. on the top. Uh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Nate. Okay. I think Philadelphia pulls this one out. Oh. Yeah, I think Philly pulls this one out. That's, wow. that's what I'm saying with my chest. Now, I'm going to back it up with a lot of different analytics. We just talking pre-pre-show. <laughs> we talking analytics and yes. talking about strategy and all that jazz. Right. But I do think this is going to be an amazing game. We talking about Sunday night football coming up. Dallas Cowboys at Philadelphia for a big time game that who's going to decide who is leading the NFC East in this thing. And we could talk about a lot of different players out here, a lot of different things that are going on in regards to those teams and why we believe I'm going to be the neutralizer because I know you guys, you're going to have your arguments, right? But why do you believe Nate dog that Dallas is going to beat Philadelphia? And if y'all are tuning in, we're talking about this all day long. So I'm leaving y'all heads up you, now. You know what? Let, let me, let me, let me say it like this. Let me tell you something, Isaiah. Let me tell you something, man. Let me, let me tell you this. Let me say it like this. And it's rare that I come from this angle. Okay. And me and, my, me and Mike Irvin, you know, I'm fan number two. He fan number one. What I'm looking for, I couldn't say this for the last five years, are we more physically tough than this team we're facing. Okay. And if we're physically tough and we go in there and we run that ball, they're averaging 105 yards giving up on defense. I'm talking about rushing. If we can get 120, 125, around about 4.8 per carry, and we 
have the time possession at 31 minutes or more. If we're physically tough, mentally stable, we can beat these guys. We can. Be, and that's why I'm saying we can beat them. Okay. This has nothing to do with Cooper Rush. The only thing I need from Cooper Rush is not to have any turnovers. Okay. So do what he's not been doing. Hold the ball. I'm serious. I'm going all the way back to 1991. Check your stats. Ooh. Where we had Berline going, uh, and he was nine for 31. We did not turn the ball over. We gave up one sack. I remember it clearly because it was me versus Reggie White. <laughs> Some dude named Reggie White, huh? And we, at halftime, after half, Kevin Martin came back and got an 89-yard punt return. We only had 11 first downs. But we won that game, man. Okay. Because we were more physical and and tougher. So you're comparing the 91 Cowboys. No, no, no. No, no, I'm not. (laughs) But I'm saying the toughness that it took. Yeah, Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Are you buying it? Are you believing it? And why are you a Philly fan? Help, us, help, help the people out <laughs> yeah. there understand why you a Philly fan. For yeah. those, for those that, 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 that haven't tuned in to the Big Head Podcast, yeah. you know? I grew up 20 miles outside of Philadelphia. Okay. So I've always been – where we are, if a little bit further south in Delaware, you're probably a Ravens fan. But right. they left for a while. They went yep. to the Colts, and then they finally brought right. them back. Right. So I've been a Philly fan forever. Um, just That's just me. You know, these games, these rivalry games are – you know, the, for, for one, it's prime time. Yep. The fans are going to be – it's going to be nuts, right, first thing. Yeah. Secondly, you're, you're right. Both teams can run can run the football for sure, right? And, um, it's going to be – it's going to be that, that ground and pound. And I think if you try and make Dallas one-dimensional, let them run, right, and, and then force wow. force Cooper to throw the football. They're going to put guys in the box. You know they've got right. – and that's right. – so, <laughs> and like we were talking about, these games are – the, the emotion, I mean, and then think about Dallas is, was just on the West Coast, right? So they're traveling. Now they're traveling to the East Coast. Right? Yeah, That's a lot, it, right? You know how it yep. is, the travel side. And Eagles, same thing. They were in Arizona. It was an ugly, ugly yeah. football game. But, right, that's that's what you want to see, guys grinding out wins, regardless if it's ugly. But that's what you go through, right? The bad, the right. bad wins lead to – so, you know, this is what it's drumming up to be as far as, you know, how these teams are going to attack it. It's – if you could pick one guy to, that's really going to stand out, who's it going to be? Like, you know, there's always one guy that usually just stands out. Is it going to be, you know, is it going to be a Fletcher Cox? Is it going to be a Darius Slay? Is it going to be uh, 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 Zeke? Or is it going to be uh, well, one of the wide receivers? Gonna see yeah, the, you, you never Brown, know, right? It's got to be yeah. somebody, but at the same time. Hold on, let me, let me stop you for a minute. Hmm? You better learn who. Cowboys are CD Lamb, okay? It's, it's God. It's Let me God. tell you I, something. I know your folks. You Let better me know tell mine. You, hey, you, better know, you better know who the bad guys are. It's hard to even say their names is the problem. I'm just, <laughs> I, I, I should just get a, a board and just write it. I'll just hold it up and see it here. This is it. Right. So what, thinking. what have you seen from Philadelphia this year that makes you so confident that they can beat yeah. up on the Dallas Cowboys? I think, one, the fact of – Able to run the ball to be able to option the ball, and I think the I mean the biggest addition was AJ Brown. Yeah, right? buddy. I mean, oh, I mean that was a great get. Yes, oh, and, that and was great. I had somebody earlier today compare AJ Brown and Michael Gallup together. They said they're the same no, frame. No, I, said, no, no, I said, don't do this. No, no, don't, don't do, do this. Don't, don't do that. Yeah, AJ Brown, a beast. Yeah, don't do that. And you, and, and, they're on two different weight room programs. Yeah, and and you know what you said you had when you you guys were playing you had the two wide receivers and you had a tight end right yeah. you've got Goddard that can play you've got yes. we've got Miles Sanders out of the backfield yep. that can play so I mean you can spread the ball but the problem is like you said the emotions it's is it is the first ten minutes of this game going to dictate the rest of it right mm-hmm. because it's all these division games that's what happens right you guys have played in them before right. with the emotion. Mm-hmm. Right. Of coming out, you know, that first 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden, if something bad happens, is the wind let out of your sails? You just, yeah. Or can you make, you know, do you use the home field advantage, the crowd, to be able to push you to keep that to keep that going? So, I mean, you know, these, these are fun games, though, right? Yeah. But, and and it's just, but, right, if if not, it'll be some excuse. Well, it wasn't it wasn't Dak or it yeah, wasn't, yeah. wasn't Jalen. There's, there's, like there's, like there's some built-in excuses. I know yeah, we're not going to ride, like, ride, that, ride like, that, that, like that, Nate, though. But for the people that are listening, they might try to ride nah, like that. We, no, and, my fans ain't going to ride like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I've never been, I mean, you said it, it's they're professional sports. You're professional athletes, right? Yep. You're here to do a job, regardless if you're the best. You're playing, yep. right? You're, 
And that's what I mean. So I love, I just, my biggest, I just love the turmoil. I love, you know, Cooper Rush has done all this and they're yep. saying, don't bring, you know, yeah. get Dak out. Hey, yeah. hey, whatever. There know? are a ton of storylines. You got Cooper Rush, is Dak Prescott coming back? Well, I think we know Dak's not going to be ready for this game. So you're going to have Cooper Rush. And then you have this, uh, the storyline of, you know, oh, shoot, Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz is probably not going to be available. And if he is available, he's not the same guy. Oh, and then you have the other uh, storyline where it's like Jalen Hurts it has an MVP, you know, uh, qualifying, you know, uh, career, not career, but season so far. And then you have the all the offensive line of the Philadelphia Eagles is all beat up. And then you have the Philadelphia Eagles are un undefeated this year. Are they going to sacrifice that? The, who's going to, whoever wins this game is going to be at the top of the NFC East. The NFC East has three really good teams now that the league has to recognize. There's so many storylines to this right and then you add the aspect of yeah this is a divisional rival these guys don't like each other mm -mm. they dis they dis they have a huge disgust for each other and this but gonna you know you know what man i, I normally let my boy just go on and what on what you got but i want y'all uh, let me tell you you know what is that why we named this show I, because see sometimes i just can't stop myself uh -huh, let it go let it go we don't have we are the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. We ooh, are the, ooh. we, me, uh -huh. the Dallas Cowboys. We have never had nothing against Philadelphia, Washington, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, or that New York. They oh. have the oh, hate. Oh, they got beef. They yeah. have yeah. the they hate. They got beef. You're yeah. pointing fingers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they so, have the hate. So, 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 so let me just, yeah. let's dig they in a little bit on that. Hate. Let's dig in a little bit on that. Now, the word is, you know, because we, when we were talking on the, on the Cowboys, some of their podcasts, you know, there's callers that call in from right. all over the country. And we have some some Cowboys fans that called in from Philadelphia. Yes. And they said, this is the word on the street now, man. Yeah. I need us to hear from your side. <laughs> they said it's real quiet right now in terms of Philadelphia fans going into this game. And they said that typically you hear a lot of noise coming out of the Eagles camp. A lot of noise from that fan base. That's right. And they said they real quiet right now. Now, is it because of Micah and Dan Quinn and D-Law and everybody else, Daryl Armstrong, Doris Armstrong? Is it because the guy's a little bit scared? Or what's going on? What, 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 what's going Are on y'all don't believe what right you're now? seeing? Now, I, not from my perspective. I'm right. looking on social media and hearing stuff that everybody's, you know, they don't want to get overhyped. And they were talking about mm. laughing. I said, this is, this is it right now. You, you focus on it. But... Think about it though. It's kind of because Grant, there are closet cowboy fans, right? As soon as they're winning, as <laughs> soon as they're winning, we're going to football. As soon as they lose, they're gone, right? Okay, right? grabbing that robe out of the <laughs> right? Exactly, right? And, you, and that's the, that's the fam, the the, the Philly fan base. Right. I th well, one, I think some of it has to do with the fact that the Phillies are still in the playoffs, so you right. got baseball too, right? So right, they're, right. They're, okay. there's a focus there. Um, so. But I think it's, we're, it's only Wednesday. Yep. By the time we get to Friday, after, there's another baseball game today, off day, they get in. Uh, series for baseball switches to Philly on Friday and Saturday. So Philadelphia this weekend uh -huh. is going to be – it's going to be – and I guarantee that chatter is going to start going right through the Okay. Game. So, right. so, you're so saying, I'm just saying with that – Okay, so you're saying there's a blanket of, of the of baseball yes, kind of yeah. hovering over just, them right now. So it'll be, it'll be a different story come the week of Christmas when Philly comes here on Christmas mm. Eve. That's going to be crazy. Yes. That's going right. to be crazy. And, and so, yeah, I think it just depends on, on, on who you're actually talking to. Okay. Right? As so, far yeah. as and then another thing is what, what I'm seeing, except, except for you all, because I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm always kicking. The only clean team, and what I mean by clean, is the only team that drops back and looks good doing it is Philadelphia. Cowboys winning ugly, mm -hmm. dirty football. Giants definitely winning with ugly, dirty football. We, you know, our third downs ain't no good. I mean, the little stats yeah. that cover that that makes you at the end. We ain't doing none of them very well. Mm -hmm. Us are the Giants, but y'all are ranked high in every category that means something, you know. And but and that's for that because y'all playing clean, crisp football. Right about now, we're not. We we got to find that. The Cowboys got to find that. So, so you know, with no preseason really, right? right. I, mean, you, I think those these first four, three or four games, right? You're trying to just yes. to find yourself as a team, right? That's and right. Then, That's right. And then, so I'm looking back to so the Eagles win last week in Arizona was ugly. So you're they're at five, right? So so they're they're the cobwebs are out. You guys 
as far as since that's what you're doing, you're pointing yeah. to you guys, are saying, you know, so with Cooper Rush has been there now, this is kind of their preseason's over as well. So right. they're, they're finally starting yeah, to, you to, think fig- like, man. to you figure it like. Because I understand both sides of it, right? right, I, can, right. I can just see her be one way <laughs> right. and yeah. be like, it's all my way and that's yeah, it. Yeah, right. Right. And I like to do, I like to start the pot, but I also yeah. understand too the logic. But when it comes to these games, you take the numbers and you throw them out the window. You're right. right. Right? It does, it does, it, it doesn't matter. And mm-hmm. it comes down to, like I said, the emotion that's going through and who can sustain it and use the crowd to. I don't even know what the weather's going to be like. Heck, it could be in the 50s. It could be raining. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the weather. Sure who knows? If it does that, then it changes the complete so, outlook of this game. As, so far as, as we're talking about these rivalry games, how did it affect you when you played? When you were playing baseball, right? How did it affect you when going into a rivalry game? We understand it from the football you, perspective. Especially the, at the end of the season when it's coming down to the wire. Yeah. You want to, you know, and the, because it's there's so many, so you you know you're going into the series. One, you know who you're going to face, really, right? As far especially the end of the year, you know what's at stake. Are you going to be in or out, depending? So, are you going to come in just to play spoiler, or mm. so? There's a lot that goes into it, right? You, and a lot of the emotion is in the beginning. That first, so it's usually a three game series. So Friday is usually the day where the emotion is is high, right? And then then once you settle in, the rest of it just seems to take because. You wake up, all right, we got to do this again, yeah. right? You guys are focused. You have one play one hitter, one, yeah. for that. That's right. it, right? You guys, boom. That, so that entire week, you're built up for it. For right? sure. So that's a, it's a mentality that, you know, everybody's different. Athletes are different. You know, basketball, hockey, the same thing. They're, they have one night, and then they've got – so they're on a road trip, right? Yep. You guys practice for one team all week. For sure. And, and I'm sure that – is that preached to you guys as far as the emotion yeah. of, hey, guys, we're going to Philly. This is yeah. going to be – Nasty. They're going to be throwing stuff. They're going to be because they, they sit outside and throw stuff at the bus and feel yeah, like right. they do. Yeah. <laughs> but but how does it like help people understand in terms of like the emotional outlet for us as for, as football players? You have this build up, right? You're you're hearing the noise. You're getting the you know the the bulletin board material. You know you got the fans. You got the environment. You you got your matchups that you're getting hyped for. So you have all these emotions building up, and then Nate gets to walk on the field and hit another man in his mouth. Right? How, what, right? What's the outlet as a baseball player when you have those same emotions yeah, building up? Yeah, yeah. What is your outlet when you step on the field? I think if you're if a, as a pitcher, it's one. If you're standing, you're everybody's looking right at you, right? And all this emotion. You're in Yankee Stadium. You're a Red Sox. Right, right, you're right, in Yankee right. Stadium. Yeah. You're standing there. I'm sure the first pitch you let go has probably got everything you've got in it. Kind of like you're hit, <laughs> yeah, right? right, right, right you're right. looking for somebody to hit. Baseball, right. uh, offensive wise, I think it's. It, it, you get that that first, basically that big swing out of your system. Oh, yeah. Now I'm ready to go, right? right. As opposed to being okay. nervous and going to hit somebody, right? You're looking. Yeah. I, it doesn't matter, right? Even if you're not, you're going to go block somebody as For hard sure. as you can because you're pissed off, right? You're right. Gonna, that's what, and it, it's just that emotion that you just need to get out somehow, some way. Some guys go bang on a wall, right? They'll yeah. go bang their head or punch something, <laughs> ready to go, <laughs> right? Right. right. I, everybody has something different, but I, it's just. It's there's just has to be some sort of a release. For you, what was it? What was that release? It's that first swing of getting yeah. it out. You know, you let it go, or, or if this, even if you didn't, even if you fouled off, it's just that's oof, all yeah, right. right. You get the your gears are moving, the, everything's everything's For sure. loose. So but it's, it, but it's a little different though, right? So if Nate Dog goes out there, even I go out there and I and I go out there and I hit somebody or I drop a pass, it's like oh, dog on it, right? Like missed opportunity. But guess what? All right, second down. Yeah. I get to go hit. I get to go. I get to go make it up. Baseball, right. you might have to wait three innings. Yeah. <laughs> but no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And, and it's and you're right. It is that part of it is tough, especially if you're if you're further down the line. How the game's going? So sometimes we'll use the crowd, right? If you're playing catch, you're okay. you guys have dealt. Yeah. You know, when you're coming in and somebody says something, so the crowd will you know will look over there, see what they're doing, and they're you know hooting and hollering. You're, trying, you're like, come on, let me yeah, see. Let what me you get got some because yeah. you want because it engages you into sure. right. because wow. sometimes right you, you deal with really stupid fan bases, yep. and then you deal with some people that actually do their homework that right. research and. Here's Isaiah. I see that he's got this and this. I'm going to talk about his mom and everybody yep, else. Yep. <laughs> and right, right, right. Yeah. Because then you're like, hey, right. you're doing your work. You're right. right. But other than that, it just, I th- you, there's everybody has a different way to kind of engage it of what, what do you need to do? Then for granted, there are those guys, too, that are deer in headlights that are up. What, what do I do, right? They're yeah. nervous as anything. But so everybody has their own release. You know, football, you hit somebody. You know, right? Well, they, that's it. Especially if you're on kick, right? You're on the oh, yeah. special team oh, yeah. at first. Dudes are right. Oh, they sure even the guys yeah. are just on special teams. Is that you know? Is that why they're just full sprint through the zone because they just want to get there. that blood going? Absolutely, absolutely, man. I, I used to be nervous like Purvis before the game. That dog, I'm sitting out there waiting for that first kickoff. You know, you got near a hundred thousand people 
in the stadium watching you, plus millions at home, and you're sitting back there getting ready to return the first opportunity, you want to talk about some nerves now. Yeah, that that'll get you. So, what as a lineman, yeah. then what's it like? Just are you just uh, are you just looking to? You, man, you said something that got me. And the Cowboys faced that last year. You said the deer in the headlights. Mm. The Cowboys had 50-some dudes walk out on the field against the 49ers in a playoff Ooh. game with that look. Really? And it took them so long before they realized what was happening. I think they saw and, them walk down the tunnel, Nate. Yeah. That's what it was. They saw that, that 49ers come out the <laughs> locker room with that, that boom box. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just... I think about that, man. That, them first few minutes, like you said, them first few minutes can wreck your whole game. And, yes, the Cowboys started playing, especially in the second half. They found their wheels, but it was just too late. Yeah. It was just too late. And so going back to what you said is, will this thing be close and everybody, you know, get it going real soon? I may take a team like, wow, they hitting us in the mouth and we have no game plan. Yeah. What, wow. what, are, what are some of the craziest rituals that you saw? When you were playing baseball, I'm just I'm just curious in terms yeah. of the, the, you know the differences between football preparation and baseball preparation. I know yeah. Nate, I know I've seen some crazy stuff. I had teammates that used to pee in the dog on pants before the game. What for real? Yeah, wow. straight down their leg in wow. pregame warm up. That was that was their thing. I had wow. I had other I had other teammates that would talk to their hands and talk to themselves. Yeah. I mean, like you had guys that go in a corner and they hidden stuff. I mean, you. What'd you, what'd you see? What was the craziest thing that you see? I mean, baseball, football, these two different breeds of people I, I, now. They're all athletes. It, and it's, I mean, with baseball, because you think sometimes guys would eat certain things. Okay. But it, it, you never really saw, I mean, you, granted, a lot of the stuff would be done with, uh, you remember the movie Major League? Yeah, right? They had, absolutely. They had Joe Boo. Right. So guys, you yeah. know, they would do that. Or guys, okay, here's, guys <laughs> would wear, depending on how they were feeling, they would wear, they would wear a thong. Right, Stop guys. This. Yes, Stop yes. This. Because Stop they were this. they weren't they were feeling sexy and they hitting. Not a jaw because, strap. Right. Nope, just a thong. They'd be hanging right. in somebody's locker, and if Stop somebody need, they'd wear it just because it was. Just what, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. So guys would do it because it. Let just, me tell you please. something. Hey, cut if that I in the back, saw, please. One of my teammates. Can you imagine me in some no, thongs no, at three forty, man? No, man. No. <laughs> I'm feeling sexy. No. Poor guys wouldn't, wa you know, wash their sh wouldn't wash a shirt or something. You know, just something to that. But it, yeah, they would hang in somebody's locker. Thong. How you feeling? Uh, you feeling sexy today? It would just be hanging in somebody's locker. And they would put it on. Somebody would, yeah. Uh, wow. It just that's what it was. It just really. I mean, some guys would. Uh, Hideki Arabu, I think he passed a few years ago. Great, great guy. So before he would go to the bullpen, he would go out the old ballpark. He'd go smoke a pack of cigarettes okay. before he would go to the bullpen. <laughs> before he go to the bullpen. <laughs> so guys had like closers are weird dudes anyway. Yeah, they're just they're a different, different, yeah, different breed. Right? They're like a like a gunner for remember the old the yeah. Chuck Cecil yeah. type of guy, just run through the wall. So closers, everybody's different. So I mean, it just really varied on who you were around. Some some guys just you could tell the guys you could walk up to them. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna leave him alone. Him yeah, that, you can walk right. You take the long route away from their locker. Um, I'm sure same thing with football, right? You don't. Yeah. Baseball started that day. You don't talk to them, really, right? That's just part of the rule. Do yeah. you go talk? To, I mean, you talk to the quarterback, right? That's just. I mean, do they? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how you guys deal with it, dude. Yeah. I mean, is wow. there? Because you guys, you know, during warmups, you guys are out there banging heads, just trying to get everybody going. Everybody's different. Nate, yeah, what, what are some of the things you saw uh, pregame? Dion used to put his whole uniform from shoes all the way to his helmet on the ground. He didn't want you to walk over it or buy it. He's having this whole, I mean, everything. Look good, feel good, on, play good. He have it just lined up on the ground. You know, and I, I, I first time I saw it, like, hey, man, you know, you're trying to see. No, nah, nah, I don't know. He just had it all, his whole, you know, the neck, the, the neck thing. He used to have on a little sweat, that wrap, you know, up on his helmet. Then his jersey, then his, his um, armbands, yeah. Bomb bands, yeah. and then his socks, and then his shoes. I was like, man. And then Eric William would use. A whole roll of tape on this finger, then a whole roll of tape on his fingers, and uh, he couldn't he couldn't go you really couldn't go use the restroom, so he used to kind of you know during the game. Man, LA, like, yeah. He had you sweating. And he just laughed. Yeah, do the pee. pee uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so it just everybody was like you said, everybody's different, man, and, and and some guys are really weird, you know, you. Just, you know, wow! Like I expect, I would expect a kicker to be a weird guy. 
right? Because right. they're by themselves, right? Yeah. Nobody, they really don't, nobody. <laughs> yeah, nobody <laughs> mess with them. Nobody mess with them. They were just, the the specialists run together. It's usually a kicker, punter, yes. and long snapper. Those yeah. three, usually you see them with the special teams coach. That little quadrant right there, they just, they do their own little thing. Yeah. You kind of leave them alone. But they, I can't think about one, the, the fullbacks, at least the fullback, the fullback when I played here was Deion Anderson. And right. Deion was just, he was, he, was our diff- he was that different dude. You just, like you said, there's some guys like the closers, Dion for our team, Dion Anderson. That is right. not 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 your Dion. Nate. Dion was that guy where you just like I'm I'm gonna leave him alone because he's a little off, and we want him to be off, right? Because the damage that is gonna be required for him to go out there and hand out, yeah. right? Wow, it's you're right. Do they even have fullbacks anymore? Uh, there's a few. Is there? There's there's a because, few. The Ravens. The Ravens have uh, a boy. And the Forty Nineers got one. And the Forty Nineers got one. I check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's more like a tight end slash. Yeah, but he will punish yeah. you. Yeah. The Ravens. The yeah. Ravens fullback. Is, he's three hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah. He'll he'll destroy your whole soul. I okay. mean, I just remember everybody had one back in the day. Back right? in the day, the games changed. Yeah, Darius Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Right, guys. That were, yeah. I mean, it was just different. Is it just the game nowadays or just things have just changed? They don't need Everybody it. want I mean, that athletic catching guy. Everybody want this guy that can catch a, you know, a great special team or so. Because it was an extra blocker too, right, for you. If somebody that yeah. big, yeah, right, you don't want somebody like Darren Sproles trying to take on a Fletcher <laughs> a Fletcher nah. Cox because they're wow. going to get blown up. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, so so Nate Dogg, you think the Dallas Cowboys are going to win the ball game. Yeah. Where does Dallas have the advantage at? against the Philadelphia Eagles that will push them over into the W category. History. That's it. But Mitch just said everything before just gets wiped out. He said it doesn't matter. It does matter. This is the scary thing is all I can rely on is no mistakes, no penalties, and time of possession. And are we willing to be physical? That. You, 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 Darius Slay, I could depend on his Detroit by the third game, him hurt. Mm. Darius Slay don't get hurt no more. So I'm looking at them, wow. They got uh, Brandon Graham. He started like three years ago playing light side football and has not stopped. Gardner Johnson. They insulted Fletcher Cox with a one-year contract. Mm. And on top of that, they asked him to get Jordan Davis going. Yeah, we were so he's not only... He got three sacks. He usually had that in a whole year. So you got my whole Philadelphia team riled up and ready to go. They they looking at Dallas. That's why everybody quiet. They looking at it like, okay, we're going to come out of here. And so the only thing I got going is can we be physical? Can we get the time of possession? Mm. Because each one of their units versus our offense, it's, it's been better. Their offense versus our defense has been better. The only place where we kind of can equal it out is the special teams. Can we hold the ball? That's just what I believe, man. So, Nate, the That's same just what I believe. argument that you have in favor of Dallas winning this ball game mm-hmm. is the same argument I have in favor of Philly winning this ball game because I think that Dallas has to play perfect. Right. I think Dallas has to play, play a perfect, perfect. game. Yes. And how many times have you seen a perfect game, Nate? It ain't never. And happened. take the crowd out of it. Right, because you know how it is. It is the, loud. The emotional side of it, right? And it's going to start at about eleven o'clock in the morning. It's going to be loud. You know that from from the get go. I mean, it's and granted, you, you were talking about it before we got on the show. As far as bringing in pieces of what you need, right? I, Jalen said this. I think the other day talked about. I'm not worried about five and zero. Oh. You guys weren't talking this last year when we were two and five. He goes, I'm just worried about next week and getting better each week. So as a leader. You see him, in, in, yeah, because what was the talk all offseason? Is he going to be the guy, yep. right? Are yes. they, are they yeah. going to trade him? What are they going to do? And it seems like he's taking that step next step of maturity to and with the pieces around him now to be able to say, this is your team to do it. And he's been, like I said, and I think part of it is because the team's been quiet about it, right? There hasn't been, I mean, usually this time of year you see social media, especially coming up from the players, there's always something. But those guys have just been quiet with it because I think it's just one of those where, they know what's at stake, but they're not looking past it. They're just they're looking to what they need to do. And um, I think I think somebody that's going to have a big day for them for us on the defensive side is going to be uh, Hassan Reddick. She's a dude. Oh, did you number seven? Uh, yeah, he's yeah, a dude. Seven, I mean, yeah. because I mean, that's one yeah. thing we have not had in a while is a is a cover linebacker to be able to 
to move around the field and still get to the quarterback. Four point because, five sacks. Yeah, because of because why? Because that defensive front yeah. is wreaks havoc. That they've they've yeah. developed this system of where they run. They just continue to run people through there, right? You know why he's able to get freed up though, Mitch? And Nate understands this as an interior defensive yeah. lineman. You you can't ISO. Davis or Fletcher Cox or that's Harper. right. You can't I, you if you can't. if you play one on one with either of those guys, yeah. whatever combination of those guys you want to utilize, they they rotate those three in there, right? And they that's all right. three of them boys, and they just rotating, okay? A little triangle offense, little Scott, and they little, run the speed guy like a Josh Sweat right through there that that can flat you put, up. You putting Sweat and you're putting Reddick on the outside. Yeah. Sweat got two point five tackles. Yeah. Oh, so you're putting these guys on the outside and they're manned up against your tackles. Yep, they're manned up against your tackles and they're gonna put pressure on them. Cooper Rush. Everybody's been talking about, you know, how's oh, Cooper Rush, Cooper Rush is. They have been max protecting Cooper Rush and getting out. Everybody's like, where the heck's the tight ends been this year? Dalton Schultz, oh, he's injured. Yeah, he was injured for a second, and he's injured now, but yep. he wasn't getting the ball because they were max protecting. All right, so now it's like, okay, well, how can we get the ball out to more guys? Well, you're throwing the ball to Noah Brown, Michael Gallup now, and C.D. Lamb. Every so often you'll have three guys going out, but for the most part they're running two-man concepts. Right now, it is going to be very difficult to put up points, just like you saw last week. They only put up one touchdown. Right? They had some field goals in there because they got they were 0 2 in red zone. Okay, so you had some field goals, but one touchdown is not going to get it done against this team because as good as Dallas's defense has been playing, how can you take advantage of Dallas's defense? Well, they're overly aggressive. The same thing that makes them great is the same thing that's going to hurt them. I guess a team like Philadelphia, because how many screen plays did Dallas Goddard get the other day? About seven of them things. Okay. They're going to force you to run sideline to sideline. Michael Parsons is going to be forced to make it three decisions. Am I going to come down the line and take the running back? Am I going to go up the field and take the quarterback? Or am I going to run out all the way to the sideline and try to go make a play on this screen because we don't have the numbers to really defend these guys out here? The Philadelphia offense is, is literally created to slow down the rush of the Dallas defense. And that has is what Dallas has been depending on and relying on to get them victories to date. So if that aspect is even remotely neutralized and you're not scoring points offensively, I don't see how they win. This is – you look at uh, Miles Sanders, man. He's, he's 414 yards. He's averaging maybe uh, – what? Let me see. He had 82 yards a game rushing, 4.8 average. Uh, that, that's nice. Five games – that's nice. Uh, he done ripped off a big 35-yard run, so they can't ignore him. A.J. Brown, you can't, you can't ignore him. Now, this is one game where I didn't care whether what we did with Cooper Cup uh, last week. I really didn't because I don't think a one-dimensional team would beat the Cowboys. Mm. But what we have to do this week here is you're going to have to make a decision. Mm. Are you going to – you can't – the last few games, we've been faking it, folks, with the run because nobody really wanted to run the ball. You ain't finna fake it, Philadelphia. <laughs> You're going to have to stop them. Can you run the ball 34 times against Philadelphia? We maybe can't, but sometimes, like me, say you got to beat your head against the wall. <laughs> because the co- because the yeah. secondary, I, th- I mean, they they can play man coverage, right? Jeez. Oh, I mean, bro. In the back end, right? So, and again, I think the one thing that they've really – emphasized through the year throughout the season so far is is the timing of the blitzes that he runs right yes yes. it's 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 beautiful but it seems to be the right moment right just be just because of what they're doing like you said they're not gonna be able to max protect if you've got a a, a corner blitz coming and then here comes the other the other eight guys and what are you doing plus and so it's you said there's a lot that's a lot of moving pieces to this and and you're right though as far as how do you how do you slow it down um, and I, th- but as far, especially with a running quarter, when you can dump it off to a, you know, a Boston Scott to a, to a, a Miles Sanders, these guys, even to a Goddard that they're just running, yeah. right. And they're not running much as far, there wasn't a lot of trickery. I think a lot of last week too was they probably didn't want to tip their hands of what they've been working on. Right. Yeah. With an ugly win. Did, 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 did the coaching staff ever go to a game of knowing not thinking ahead, just but thinking back. ahead. Yeah. But right. Th- but, but defense you know, scheme wise. Right. What of, I saw against. And I could be wrong. What I saw against the Cardinals last week is in their hearts, the coach's heart, the way they ran again, we can beat them. We can out-physical them, and in the end, we will win. Brother, and they thinking that 
in every game. They have not played anybody that they that scared them. If they score a touchdown, they believe in their heart. Oh, man, we can score a touchdown. They, they slowed down yeah. Arizona because Arizona yeah. is the number one blitzing team in Thank the NFL. Thank you. So they yeah. screened them to death. Yeah. And that's what I was, that's what I was they thinking. Took, they about. took yeah. their advantage away from them. You know yeah. what's so funny is 189 yards, y'all ranked like fourth. Y'all didn't get up 189 yards in passing. Now, and see, you know, I talk more on this on our podcast because if I take this to the fans, they you know, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. the Homer guy, so I yeah. can't take this to my fans <laughs> over there at the Cowboy Place. But, bro, Job. you're a top 10 defense. You ranked number five overall. Mm. Y'all ain't giving up what uh, but two hundred and ninety four yards a game. And offensively, they're number four in the league on rushing. Yes. What's the weakness of the Dallas defense? I don't know yet. I don't know. I ain't giving out. up yet. You gonna find? I ain't out. giving up yet. I hear you. Okay, so let's do this before we before we get out of here. I'm gonna throw yeah, this out there. I ain't giving up, man. Right. We're going to say say it with your chest part two. Say, okay. say it with your chest part two before okay. we get out of here. Who's the most important player in this game? First, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Jalen Hurts. Jalen's gonna be the one that you talk about slowing this game down. You talking about the overall, overall game? Overall Who's game. gonna overall have the game. greatest <laughs> impact on this game? Jalen Hurts and that running game, because if they can slow, they can slow it down, right? Because as soon as that blitz comes, right, they're gonna dump it off, right? And then all of a sudden, now they're not gonna bring a rush. And now, by doing that, you freed up Devontae Smith to run straight down the field and then and let it go. Right, so they're able to stretch the field when they need to, but they're also able to play kind of like baseball, small ball, okay. right? Like Think it. and dunk to death, yep. right? Get it and out. Patient. Oh, here, yes, exactly, right? Because you know that, like you said, Parsons is going to be all over the place. I, and I, another, I don't know what the injury reports are looking like this week. Who's who's in? Who's He'll out? Be fine, huh? He'll be fine. No, but I mean, just saying on both sides. I don't know yeah, if my lot is going to play. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, that dude's a man yeah. child in himself. Yes. So, yes. It, so that's what I mean. They'll they'll figure out ways to. You know, I know Belichick was great at that, right? If they see the coverage, they're going to slide somebody just to draw it to the other way. So they're going to – there's going to be a lot of stuff that I think that we haven't seen from our, from the Philadelphia side. But at the same time, too, it's like you said, I think with you, if Dallas is to pull this off, it's going to be not turning the ball over right. and letting the emotions get the best of them. Because, that, like you said, it's going to be loud and it's prime time and it's in Philadelphia. Mm. So you're going with – Going with Jalen Hurts as the most important player. Yes, in because game. he's going to dictate whether or not your your offense is going to get on the field for a certain amount of time. Because okay. you were talking about the Cross time possession is big. Exactly. Well, you got Nate Dog, most important player in this game. Time of possession. No, 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 player, <laughs> player. You got to go with the player. Player. The most important player uh-huh. in this game. Go ahead and say number eleven. Go ahead and say it. No, sir. Oh, no, sir. The Curveball. Most Important player in this game. Uh, and I don't like to go off of players that have to rely on other players. Okay. The, it's Jalen. Jalen Hurts is the Ooh, most double down. important guy. Oh, I'm serious. Double down. He's the, Because if this guy do what he's been doing and get 32, 33 minutes time of possession, mm-hmm. 160, 100 and whatever yards they rush a game. Mm-hmm. Problem. I'm in trouble. Mm. I'm and, in trouble. And, make, and make Dallas chase points. Right? Yeah. What's the worst thing you can do? Yes, sir. We, chase we can't chase points. can't chase, yeah. Yeah. chase points. I agree. So when, we, so when they flip the coin mm-hmm. and die to somebody, they the first and the no, second half, take I'm the ball. coming up out of here, man. Take the ball. I'm coming up out of here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make a statement, right? right. Don't, bit, yeah. don't, 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 do don't that. repeat death. Yeah. 49ers, don't repeat. You remember that last I remember year? That. I wanted to go home. You breaking the ball. We was at the stadium. Yeah. We done lost. Man, so, and, and, and so you, you say Dallas it. needs to do Matt Hasselbeck. We want the ball. We're gonna we score. We want the ball. That's right. We're gonna get at least three. <laughs> Come on, man. Right. Don't give y'all the ball. All right. I got a curveball for you guys. Um. You guys both double down on Jalen Hurts. I'm gonna go on the offensive side of the ball for the Philadelphia Eagles because I truly believe that if they can neutralize Dallas's defense, the game's over. If they can even slow down 70% of what Dallas has been putting out. Well, who's the player? Jason Kelsey. If Jason Kelsey has I hate that little dude too, he's so good. If Jason I'm Mark Stepnoss, I hate him. <laughs> if he has a game, Nate. If he has a game and he's able to control Neville Gallimore, yes. if he's able to reach Oso Digizua, oh, if he's yes. able to get to these guys on the interior Preach. and allow their guards to work up to Vander oh, Esch and Barr. Oh, 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 the game's the game's over. 
Because Hurts is going to do Hurts things. Sanders is going to do Sanders things. And I think he's going to have at least two or three solid cutbacks on this defense that mm. have been gaping holes that have not been taken advantage of aside from two players, Mixon and Saquon Barkley. They both yeah. taken advantage of the cutback. But Jason Kelsey, if he's able to get his blocks on the interior defensive line, it's going to be a wrap because it's going to it's going to isolate these guards to neutralize the second level of the Dallas Cowboys, and it's going to be over because Micah Parsons is going to have to be making three decisions. You you know what you know what I watched the film, and you know what Jason and his two centers are doing so well is they do block. Yep. See, a lot of kids don't understand. Combo, baby. Combo block. You have to neutralize that down guy. Stop him in his tracks. And then you can make a move to the linebacker. Kelsey's doing a good job of jamming that dude onto the guard. Passing him off. And pushing him. Yep. And going up, man. You know what? Mm. A couple of chop blocks. Let me put in there. <laughs> Couple of chop blocks. Hey, it's real. And, I, and people need to go back to so all the fans yeah. that are out there listening. I know y'all wow. like Jason Kelsey, you know, Travis Kelsey. No, 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 no. His Jason brother. Kelsey. Jason Kelsey. The his big brother. brother. The one who big really brother. runs the podcast. Exactly. The big brother. Okay? Yeah. Big right. brother. He, wow. If he controls his game, it's going to be a problem for Dallas. I think Dallas is, is, is prime. And if anybody can go out here and manhandle Philadelphia personnel wise, it's Dallas. But unfortunately, this game is not just played with personnel. There's strategy element to it as well. And if these guys are in position to be effective, we got to complete at least 15 passes. We so got to complete see, at least 15 so passes. So you say you got to throw more than the 16 you threw last yeah, week? Yeah, yeah, we got to. We got Unless we beat 15 for 16. And like you said, that could, that could change depending on if you're starting to chase points. You're going to have to throw the football. Woo! Right? Depending if you're chasing man, points. Stop. Dallas stop. Gonna, I don't even want to hear Dallas you talk throw no 32 more, times. Yo, I don't want to hear you talk cool, no hey, more. I'm going to say it right now. My bold prediction. Dallas and Cooper Rush are going to throw the ball at least 32 times. They're going to have to. And they're going to have to be 80%. It can't be no 60. It can't be no – because Darius Slay, man, I hate you, dog. You ain't never finished no season or started no season in Detroit like this. And now you go to the – come on, man. Let's go eat a donut. Hey. <laughs> Mitch, appreciate you coming on the show today, big dog. <laughs> I brought you donuts last week, too, yeah, dog. man. Hey. Glad you came through, man. Absolutely. Gonna, if Absolutely. you guys haven't checked out the Big Head Podcast, make sure you guys go check it out here on the Dub Network. That's my dog, Nate Dog, over there. He's over there shaking his head. He's up there trying to trying to calm himself. We got we got him flying up and flying high with the Eagles. Is that a uh-uh? Uh-uh. Hey, uh-uh. hey, uh-uh. hey for Isaiah stand back. <laughs> Nate New, like Kevin Mitch. This is another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Oh, we'll see y'all man. next time. Cowboys for life. <laughs>